My name is Devon Vincent Bryan. I work in the Office of Residence Life. There are two anchor points I'm going to speak to. Um, one is high school and the other being college. In high school, Spanish was the language you get to learn. I am not a language person. Like languages, I'm not good at them. But I was really committed to being the best student I can. And so I studied hard, I worked really hard. I made it all the way to our final assignment. I felt really proud handing that in. And you know, a couple class cycles go by and we get the papers back and there's like a big old F on it. I was super ashamed about failing. And they could pretty say with a lot of confidence that all the words for this essay are here. They're just all backwards. Second story is around a math class I was taking. But she was like, Devon, can you come up and do this equation on the board? I started doing the equation and I could just hear the people behind me reacting like, huh? And the more they would react and the more I looked at her and looking at her face, the more anxious I got, the more I started to like slightly hyperventilate. And then I passed out. I, just <laughs> I woke up on the couch of our dean. She was able to think in a more humanist way open the dialogue with me, like, talk to me about what you were feeling. What was it like to walk to the board? And so I explained all that to her, and, and she said, I, I, think, I think we should have you tested. At the end of what felt like to be a couple days of ongoing back and forth testing, the testing was clearly indicating that there was presence of both dyslexia and dyscalculia. The test also reflected that the speed in which my brain processes information is really fast. I couldn't write as fast or type as fast as my mind was going. And with that information, I went back and started looking at past papers, emails that I had written. And you can see it, that there are times in which you read a sentence or a statement and it is missing words. The question then was, what do I do? Do I just be hyper-cautious of all things I write? And for some time, yeah, <laughs> it does require some mindfulness. But it also got me thinking about how I can be not necessarily driven wholly by shame or by a fear of failure. And affirming again, that it's not an indication of my intelligence, uh, it's really just how my brain is wired, how I process the world, how I give information back. Invisible disabilities can be really challenging because the world won't look at you and, and immediately know what your accommodations need to be, or that you need accommodations. It's, it's a very outing process you have to tell someone can't use the word shame enough because it's, it's very much present. Because the assumptions that are made about competence, depending on your audience, can quickly be eroded. So I think I work hard to lead with my capabilities, to allow my work and my effort to stand on its own. And then when I feel safe, share. I see myself as an advocate that I need to be in spaces and places where people can see how someone with that disability can still persevere and not be seen as less than, and be in a role of leadership. I'm a part of making policy. I'm a part of creating access. I'm a part of developing our curriculum. And woven into that is my experience. There is something to the adage, knowledge is power. For a long time, I didn't know what my brain was doing. I wasn't sure why this was hard. I wasn't sure why I was like everybody else. I didn't have the language, the vocabulary, the access points. And so simply gaining that, which means talking to folks who have some expertise, doing a little bit of internal research, learn more about yourself. I think that's what it's ultimately about. And so the more I know about that, the more whole I can be, the more me I am. What you do for yourself now will make your tomorrow self even better.